Good morning. Hey YouTube, I'm Austin. This is Real World Science, and today I have a bunch of soldering to do. I have 25 coral cam PCBs to put together, and 25 kilo cam PCBs to put together. I'm gonna get to work here. I'm gonna probably just put the camera up while I do this soldering so you guys can see what it's like. And then we're gonna do a quick update about Kilo Kim. It's gonna be a short one today, but I have some really exciting news to share. So I will see you guys in just a bit. Today I am going to give you a quick little update about Kilo Cam, but it's so windy that I can't really walk around like I was planning on. So we're gonna just take a seat so I can give you this update really quick. In total, there are three things that I wanted to tell you about KiloCam. And if you don't already know what KiloCam is, then go check out the video that's in the description. Long story short, KiloCam is a habitat monitoring camera that I'm trying to design that is ultra cheap. So it basically is this little PCB on the back, all the fancy stuff's happening on the other side of this PCB, and it connects to an ESP32 cam, which are like, five to eight dollar two megapixel camera boards. The idea for KiloCam is to take these camera boards in the front that are not very power efficient and make them really power efficient so we can stick it with a small Li-Poly battery or something like that, leave it out in the field for months at a time to collect photos for us, and then go around and collect them. Because grad students like myself and researchers in general don't have the resources to put hundreds of cameras out in remote locations and service them regularly. So I'm hoping that KiloCam is going to make habitat monitoring more accessible. Now I said that there are three things I wanted to tell you about KiloCam. Three things that I'm learning as I get to know this instrument that I've only just recently made and got successful working prototypes for. The first is that that little two megapixel camera, this guy, it's only a quarter inch sensor, is actually remarkably good for a five to eight dollar camera. I'll put up this photo right now of Manoa Stream, which is about a hundred yards that way. You might even be able to hear it in this microphone. And what you'll notice is sure, it's not too great. You don't wanna like blow this thing up and print it up to post on your wall, but it is more than adequate for common habitat monitoring uses. Things like monitoring stream levels, monitoring plant growth or seasonality or plant phenology. Um, maybe even if you were using it to detect animals coming down to a stream. So it looks like for my purposes, the imagery coming out of the ESP32 cam that KiloCam relies on and uses is more than adequate for habitat monitoring. Is it great? Is it 4K or 23 megapixels, even like this little camera I'm filming on? No, but two megapixels is gonna get the job done and it's gonna do it in a really, really power efficient package. Item number two I wanted to tell you about is that I am learning some little quirks about this camera in that it tends to prefer exposing for shadows. That has some drawbacks and some benefits. The good news is that if you have an animal like this cat that is hiding in the shadows, you will be able to see the cat. The bad news is that it will overexpose areas that are in full bright sunlight if there is also shadow in the same frame. That's kind of problematic and I'm working on how I can fix that possibly in the code that sets the camera settings um, here in the ESP32 cam but I don't think it's gonna cause too much of an issue for the sort of work that we're trying to do because these are really niche cases where you have a very wide dynamic range happening in a fairly small frame. The third and last thing I want to tell you about today, and this is going to be my shortest video ever, at least that's what I hope, is that adding new lenses to the little ESP32 cam board here opens up all sorts of new opportunities for Kilo Cam. I've learned this by designing a 3D printed adapter and that 3D printed adapter has a common M12, 12 millimeter lens mount attached to it. That lens mount allows you to use common M12 lenses with this ESP32 board. And that work was all based on work done before by Everyday Engineer, a link to his video down below. His video is based around using, I think it's called vector board or something like that. Um, or perf board to design his adapter. I made mine 3D printable just because I have a 3D printer that I can use and I thought it would be easier that way. You can actually make your ESP32 cam see in infrared really easily. So I bought a six millimeter lens off of Amazon. I did not know that on an ESP32 cam board, the infrared filter is here inside the lens. It's not anything on top of the sensor itself. So when I took off this lens and put on that new six millimeter lens with my adapter board, 
all of a sudden, all the photos that I was taking were capturing infrared, which is fantastic for certain applications and not so great for others. Water, which absorbs infrared light very readily and reflects very little of it, appears really dark in photos, like I'll show you right here, again, of Manoa Stream. Also, when you're trying to pick out animals from complex backgrounds or backgrounds that the camera maybe doesn't have the resolution to resolve normally, like this photo here of some tiny finches, we're talking like three or four inches long, and these finches are down in the grass. These are really small birds in a kind of bushy grass environment. Well, all of a sudden, when you switch to an infrared lens, then all of a sudden, those finches stand out right up from the background. They're super easy to observe. So I think there are some applications for using an infrared lens, and certainly there are new opportunities to use other lenses that I haven't even tested yet. So if the little lens here on top of an ESP32 cam, and by extension, a Kilo cam, isn't cutting it for some ecologist or someone trying to use this, I'm excited at the idea that they could pretty easily just 3D print an adapter and slap all sorts of different lenses onto these boards to repurpose them for all sorts of different uses, be it maybe macro images. Man, I would love to see some macro time lapses done with a Kilo cam. I mean, macro habitat monitoring, is that even a thing? Otherwise, just the infrared stuff is really, really, really easy to do and I think has some really useful applications for habitat monitoring or looking at how things like birds might be using their habitats. I totally almost forgot to tell you guys the most exciting thing about Kilo cam. Get ready for this. There are going to be Kilo cams in Tibet, Africa, New York, Maine, Florida, Ohio, Georgia, I've run out of fingers now, California, Utah, I think Colorado, Indonesia, and Australia. Oh, and of course here in Hawaii as well. I announced Kilo Cam maybe two weeks ago when I posted that last video, and I sent an email to a listserv that I'm part of that is full of super, super smart ecologists and people who would be interested in habitat monitoring. Well, it turns out the need for that is astronomical, way more than I thought it was. And while that's a good thing, it also has kept me very, very busy over the past two weeks. As you saw at the beginning of this video, I have been soldering like crazy, trying to prepare boards to send out to all of these field testers who have volunteered not only their time, but sometimes also their money to help pay for their beta testing boards. So that way they can test Kilo Cam in real world environments, ranging as far as the glaciers of Tibet, to the savannas of Africa, to swamps in Florida and coral reefs in Indonesia. I am so excited for this and I'm excited to have you guys along the way because all of the people testing Kilo cams are going to be providing feedback so I can improve the design and hopefully also the data that they are collecting and the data that future Kilo cams collect is going to be used to inform conservation and management decisions. That is the future that I'm hoping for with this little board, is a tool that is just as affordable for someone in Indonesia as it is for someone in New York as it is for someone in Tibet or Africa. I am super excited for where Kilo Cam is headed. You can bet that there are going to be tons of Kilo Cam videos in the future, just as I've been making Coral Cam videos, and we're gonna follow the progress of this little camera. I hope that it makes a positive impact on the world, and I'm excited to have you guys along the way. My name is Austin, this has been Real World Science, this is Kilo Cam, and I will see you next time.